how to exaggerate poses, how to make poses feel more fluid. When we're first taught anatomy and figures, we are taught to work with geometry. You're gonna use like trapezoidal forms for like the upper torso or like cylindrical forms for your arms or whatever. All that fun jazz, right? There's a lot of like shapes, a lot of forms that you can use to build up the body. But a heavy reliance on geometry leads to stiffness, right? A lot of the times when we are drawing bodies, drawing anything like that, we tend to always, always, always draw those shapes in, right? You'll see a lot of beginner artists do this, right? It's like perfect head. If they're an anime artist, then it's like the teardrop shape. And then you probably have a very stiff neck, very stiff trapezoid here, circle, circle, rectangle, right? This crazy stiff crazy crazy stiff you can do that for the first few times that you draw like that's what you learn to do and then you get more used to doing forms right so maybe then you start to think of this as a sphere and then you start to think of the neck as a cylinder but you're still drawing them really heavily like these boxes and cylinders and this is a sphere and this is a cylinder right this is also stiff <laughs> Right? Crazy, crazy stiff. If we rely too, too heavily on those forms, they become very, very stiff. You need to know how to add the muscles back in, and then you need to know how to almost, quote unquote, unlearn them for your dynamism. If you rely too, too heavily on those forms, it leads to stiffness. Your poses will become really, really stiff. It's almost like, you know, those like wooden posing dolls that you see? First of all, I hate those. <laughs> those wooden dolls, they are not fluid enough, right? When you're trying to get with a pose, like they help with foreshortening, but not so much with posing. So you kind of need to unlearn your forms to get dynamic. So your over-exaggeration means that you're forgetting your forms outright. If you really, really want to exaggerate your poses, your forms, your geometry will suddenly not really apply. It's now you're working in just organics. But the thing is, is that doing this takes a lot of practice, right? You need to have your forms memorized in order to forget them again. This is definitely a more advanced lesson. So if you have your geometry memorized, you have your measurement memorized, you have all of that memorized and you can like mostly work without reference in terms of that, then yes, you can like, you know, start to forget it, quote unquote. The thing is, is that you're not really forgetting. You just have it memorized to the point where you don't need them anymore. A dynamic pose is a pose that has movement within it. Movement is not always literal. All poses, still ones included, have movement. So you could have like a very, very literal movement, right? If you have somebody jumping over something, whole body is vaulting. This has movement. This is literal movement. The person is actually moving. They are jumping. They are vaulting over a thing here. But even like somebody standing still, this also has movement. So non-literal. This person is standing still. This pose still has movement. The reason is because of the line of action. Your line of action moves throughout the entire body. This one has a very funky line of action. It's very much like that, right? You could even argue that there's like a, a line of action here and then a line of action here, but this one's very funky. Most dynamic poses do have foreshortening. That's the thing is that most dynamic poses won't ever not have foreshortening. 99% of the time they will, like even the smallest bit, like this foot is foreshortened, this thigh is foreshortened. It's like, they'll always have a bit of foreshortening in there. This forearm is foreshortened, that kind of vibe. This is about movement. So this is movement. So literal movement is the person's actually moving. Non-literal movement is the person's not actually moving. They're just standing still, but they will always have movement within them. You need to find that curve. You need to find that line of action because your line of action will determine whether something is moving or not. Most of the time, your line of action should never be perfectly straight up and down. It should never be horizontal. Even if the person is lying down, they will have some kind of movement to them. There's still a curve to that. Every pose should have some kind of movement to it. It doesn't matter whether they're standing still or not. This isn't even exaggeration. This is just what your poses should look like. <laughs> you know, you should have some kind of movement to them. So these are for dynamic poses, but exaggerated poses, those are always either an action or a response. Never the in-between. Let's say if we have a person standing here and reading something on their phone, there's a wall here. Somebody sneaking around. So this is still dynamic. Say if the person jumps out, this person's like, oh my gosh, this person's coming out, spooking them. They're like, blah. This is now exaggerated. This is an action, this is a reaction. So the exaggerated pose is either an action or a response to an action, right? So it is either the action itself or it is the reaction or it's both, right? That's when you want to exaggerate your poses, never the in-between. So this is like your dynamic poses beforehand and your exaggerated or those. When you do all exaggerated poses, you need to think like you're an animator. 
It's anticipation of follow through. So this applies to comics and sequential art. When you are doing any kind of action within a comic, you need to make sure that you are drawing the anticipation and the follow through. What does that mean? So say if we have somebody who's jumping, let's say we start with somebody running, right? They're running, they're about to make a big jump. If you'd like to support the channel in the creation of free arts education, become a member on Patreon. The frame that you'd wanna draw is them coming down, they're charging up. So this pose, this is the anticipation, right? It's the anticipation for them to jump and then they do jump. But you'd wanna exaggerate this too, right? So maybe they got like a giant like, whoa, right? The peak of the jump. But let's say that they don't land too great. So what you do is they land on their face and it's right at the peak as their body kind of skids and their legs fall up. Like they fell down and now they're like petering, skidding on the ground. Their legs are pushing backwards. Their arms are completely fully extended, right? They're like sliding down there. Suggested so these four illustrations of stick figures, you get the idea of what this action is. You need to think like an animator. The in-betweens of these, the person kind of jumping like this, this is unnecessary. Of them coming off the ground, it feels stiff. The person who is a little bit afterwards, where they're completely flat on the ground, this is also stiff. There's no movement in this. They're perfectly flat on the ground, right? This feels more fun. It feels more exaggerated. So those kind of like after poses, while these are a lot easier to draw, they're not dynamic and they're not exaggerated, right? You want to be able to have that sense of exaggeration within your work. So my main tip for any kind of exaggerated pose is to think like what you would see within that action. Let's do another pose. Like let's say that somebody's reeling back to punch somebody. That's the popular one. When you're doing poses as well, don't be afraid to cut off limbs, right? You can't always see every single aspect of the limb. I'm not gonna be able to see this bicep, right? It's gonna be behind the body. Say the whole body's twisting. Their pelvis is facing forwards, but this upper side of the body is twisting. So you notice that this movement is going throughout the entire body. Look at the angle of the hips, look at the angle of the shoulders, they're opposite. This arm is reeling backwards before they punch, right? This is the anticipation. And then you don't just draw the person <laughs> punching. That's the big thing. The biggest misconception when it comes to action poses is people always draw the second pose as the action happening. No, <laughs> you draw the action action after it's happened. You draw the follow through. So you draw what happens afterwards, right? You'll see a lot of beginner artists will go like, oh yes, I'm gonna draw the punch and the arm is straight forward. No, 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 <laughs> that's stiff. It's actually very stiff. What you wanna do is draw the follow through. So the whole body is arced forwards. This shoulder is back now. They've reeled back. This arm is now swung. And notice me ignoring forms a bit, right? Does a forearm bend like this? No. Does it matter? Not really, <laughs> right? We're here to exaggerate. We're here to make it look a lot stronger. And to do that, you're gonna have to forget your forms a little bit. Am I forgetting them entirely? No, I'm still thinking about them, but I'm not using geometry. But now you have this crazy twist in the whole body. Is this form correct in terms of how he's punching? No, but that's okay. <laughs> We're not thinking about that right now. So this is the anticipation and follow through. So that's kind of what we want to think of when we go with exaggeration. If you learned something new, like and share this with a fellow art nerd. If you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe. Join a virtual class to learn live from our professional artists. Get creative assignments, individual guidance, and real-time feedback on your artwork. Start today and level up your practice. If you enjoyed this video, here's a couple other videos you can check out next.